Welcome to the market update. Today is October the 9th. It's Monday. Hope everybody had a great Monday. Good trading day. We're going to do the same thing we do. Uh, we're, I guess I'm going on uh, two weeks now doing this bad boy. So let's uh, look at a couple of cool things. See if there's anything that you like. Make sure that you leave me some comments if there's anything specifically that you want me to cover. Uh, I try to look at the same eight things every day, uh, looking at the futures markets from a daily time frame and a daily perspective and uh, seeing what we can what we can uh, find out there that's that's worth looking at. So I'm going to start at the ES. Now, I will tell you the ES, we talked about it on Friday, that it had broken this upward trend line. And look at how like it was using this upward trend line as support, turned around and used it as resistance kind of on the way back through. Uh, but you know, I don't, I don't want to rely on a support and resistance for a trend line. And I got to tell you, there's absolutely no way that I'm going to short this thing. So though we got a nice little move out of here from 2550 to 2543, I did not catch that at all. There was no way I was catching that thing. Uh, just because I'm not willing to take the risk required to short at the, at the all time high, not doing it ain't going to happen. It's just not a safe way to go. Um, I still have this area kind of listed down here as a highlighted area. We might want to take a look at this zone up in here, although my fear is we stayed in that for quite a while, allowing us to kind of eat through any orders that, that kind of happen to be there. So I'm going to leave this thing be. I am still, you know, we've got this this funky little double top looking thing here. I am not going to be shorting off this double top. I just don't feel like it's safe to do. I think that shorting the all-time high is like tugging on Superman's cape. It's like spitting into the wind. Uh, it's just it, it, nothing good can come of that. It's a, what was it? Poking the proverbial dragon. I, uh, I don't feel like that's a great idea. Uh, NASDAQ. So looking here at the NQ. So it, it, this NQ level, we've got this area here <clears throat> where it was obviously a, a bit of some some sell orders that were piled up until we got the breakout from that sell order area. And now we might have, I'm going to remove that drawing. <clears throat> I'm trying to only uh, really adjust the drawings when we're in the video so that you guys can see the evolution, if you will, of uh, of levels, the evolution of, of things over time as they come. So I, I know that uh, Dennis had actually posted that he was looking for the retest of the breakout uh, it didn't quite get down in enough. My guess is to get filled. I still think there there could be some some buying in here when price comes back down to there. Now, looking at that on a bigger time period, call it the daily chart, that would just be a tiny little pullback into here. But it would line up really well with this former peak. And you know, I, I'm not a big old resistance becomes new support kind of guy. But there is going to be enough orders that come in that are going to kind of help that. And when it lines up with where we think there's some buy orders. And uh, and the fair value of price, it might make sense uh, to use that uh, as an as a possible accumulation point. Looking at crude oil, so crude oil, I was literally I was really looking to see if we would get some sort of a breakdown out of this level. We were unable to get the breakdown out of this level, so I'm just going to completely remove uh, these drawings as they don't really mean anything to me uh, any longer. Since I was unable to get the breakdown from there, I'm not going to use that one going forward. Um, and, oops, I keep uh, hitting the wrong button. And then, um, you know, there's really nothing in here that I like. I've got this area way, way, way up here, up at 52.18, and that's still pretty far away from current price. And and then the other level comes into play way down here, 48.44 uh, by 48.75, this little area in here. I, I'm not touching either one of these. I'm actually going to throw an alert on this one. Uh, because I think that uh, it's worth having a an alert if price gets below that level. So we've got a little bit of an alert if price breaks below here, um, because these could be pretty good reversal, uh, pr pretty good reversal areas. Looking at this on the daily chart, the bigger picture chart, uh, we are seeing a little bit more weakness in those energy markets as as they've you know they've come down pretty hard over the last couple of days. Um, all in all, looking at even bigger on call it the weekly chart, you can see uh, that our our parabolic trend, if you will, was was stopped. But you know we we are kind of sitting right in here on the weekly chart of this you know this fairly weak trend. It, all in all, it's not doing a whole heck of a lot. So for short term trading, for short term time frames, you've got this area down here, this area up in here. Those are, you know, we're not looking, I'm not trying not to, go, to go all the way down to five minute charts, 15 minute charts. If you do want to go to a five or a 15 minute chart, you do have a couple of levels right through here. Um, if, you, if you really want to go to those very small time frames, uh, you might have a little bit of a level up in here. 
Uh, if you want to expand that out a bit higher, you can. Uh, this one I'm not as, as as big of a fan of, although it's a uh, you know better time of the day that it was formed. It's still not one that I'm I'm completely enamored with. So this one here, you know, if you want to take a flyer, that's a really small risk level that you may be able to to, to get a little bit of a piece of uh, off that zone. Uh, gold, solid gold. That always reminds me of gold member from Austin Powers. Um, uh, we are definitely in a little bit of a declining uh, pattern here. Rallied up into this area right there. So looking at that on an hourly chart, uh, we do have a little bit of noise up here that might be hard to get through. Nothing that I'm in love with, though. Nothing for me to really be willing to jump out in front of this thing. And I'd have to get a lower swing low on the hourly chart before I would get short this thing. So uh, though it's coming back down, I'm not in love with any of these areas where of, of, uh, of, of, of sell order accumulation. So I'm going to stay out of that. Uh, so let's take a look at our bonds. Uh, bonds, obviously bonds today, pfft, nothing, right? Uh, as we uh, we don't have a whole heck of a lot of movement in our bond markets today, certainly. Um, and, but we still do have two areas that are marked off. These areas, the, the, the upper one's been marked off for, I think, since we did the first video weeks ago. Uh, and then the secondary one we marked off last week as still a potential opportunity. We put some dashed line through it because it's a slightly lower probability. Uh, and you'd want to take that probably on a confirmation entry if you do indeed like that. As far as the Aussie goes... A uh, couple of levels in the Aussie that, you know, this one here has been has been a thorn in my side for quite a while as we've been able to get back to that one. Looking at this thing on the daily chat, you know, like that, the daily chat. That's what my friends up in Boston say. We talk about the chat. We're going to trade the chat. There's bars over here. It's wicked hot over here. All right. And my Boston people are probably like, oh, come on. Really? Really? Okay. So on the daily chart, there's plenty of room for this thing to continue to fall. I don't know if we're going to be able to make it up to the uh, to to the supply level or this area of sell orders that I've kind of uh, put in play. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to make it all the way up to there. So we're though it still exists and though it's still, so, though it's still valid, uh, we're going to have to look a bit lower if you want to rejoin this smaller time frame, tr this bigger time frame trend. And this is a, a case where you just might want to be a breakout. Uh, I would be actually okay if somebody said, you know what, I'm going to short it right now and I'm going to place a stop just above here. If uh, if somebody said that they were going to do that, I wouldn't fault them for that. If you're going to, if you're thinking about, sh you know, shorten it, placing a stop just up here, you, you know, you may get a nice little run out of that with a fairly small amount of risk. So we'll leave that one in. Uh, if somebody's interested in doing that in the euro, there's a little level up here still hanging in. This kind of it relates back to the same one in the uh, in the Aussie, and then in the Canadian dollar. Now the Canadian dollar, if you look, uh, I want to just kind of highlight this. We had breakout, big move down, uh, breakout, big move down. Uh, there was another one over here. Ah, breakout, big move down. Break out, big move down. So you see a pattern developing. Well, do we have a potential breakout again? Possibly. Uh, going out here to the daily. Is there room for it to fall? Yeah, until about here. So I think we could have that just that same setup again. This is one where we were just selling every rally as we've you know kind of broken through uh, that uh, that bigger picture area. So those are our eight uh, markets that we have been looking at on a daily basis. If you've got something specific that you would like me to analyze, like me to take a look at, if it's a stock, if it's whatever, send me a uh, send me an email. You can email me chuck at iiefinancial.com or you can uh, leave a comment on the videos, although I will tell you I do my best to check the, the, the video comments or you can just hit me up on Twitter. Uh, might be better to catch me up on Twitter if you've got something you want me to analyze. So hope everybody has a great day. Enjoy the video and I will... We'll see you all soon. Be good. Be safe.